Good day, here are the headlines of the Philippine News Agency. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. has called on fellow member economies in the APEC or Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation to act regionally in averting conflict and promoting peace. In his remarks during the APEC CEO Summit in San Francisco, California, President Marcos said that progress and prosperity are only possible in a world that is at peace. He emphasized the importance of APEC's role in averting conflict and promoting peace built on a solid economic forum. Meanwhile, Marcos urged APEC members to improve partnerships with the private sector and be more in sync with the APEC Business Advisory Council and other stakeholders. He called on them to leverage the APEX core value propositions as an incubator of innovative ideas pathfinder for collaborative solutions to emerging trade issues and platform for progressive and responsive economic and trade policies. Meanwhile, the President highlighted five elements that are critical to the APEX role in the region, namely expansion to accommodate seats to represent all people, broadening and deepening of commitments with its stakeholders, balancing of sustainability against the risk of protectionism, intervention through economic reforms to aid ailing markets, and increasing the level of APEX ambition and enlarging the scope of its operation. I wish to emphasize once more that global and regional economic governance, plat governance platforms such as APEC are geared towards averting conflict because sustained prosperity and progress are only possible <clears throat> in a world that is at peace, which in turn must be a peace that is built on a solid economic foundation. President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. promoted the country's interests and economic goals on the sidelines of his visit to San Francisco, California for the APEC CEO Summit. In his keynote speech during the Philippine Economic Briefing, President Marcos said his administration seeks to attract investments that will uplift Filipino by boosting productivity with infrastructure through its Build Better More program. He said the administration has identified at least 80 potential infrastructure projects that can be funded through Maharlika Investment Fund, the Philippines' first-ever sovereign wealth fund. The president made a statement following the revision of the implementing rules and regulations of Republic Act 11954. Marcos stressed the need to improve connectivity and supply chain as the Philippines recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic. He also noted the need to invest in digital infrastructure to improve convenience in financial transactions and increase productivity. Meanwhile, President Marcos and several leading Silicon Valley companies agreed to collaborate on artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. During a roundtable meeting in San Francisco, Marcos said the government is focusing on upskilling and reskilling of Filipino workers to keep up with the ever-growing demand and advancements in the fields of AI and cybersecurity. He also noted the need for capability improvements to counter the vulnerability to cybersecurity threats amid the government's digitalization thrust. The roundtable meeting was co-organized by CEO of cybersecurity firm Night Dragon, Bain and Company CEO Emmanuel Maceda, Crescent Point Group Vice Chairman Thomas Pampido, and the Department of Trade and Industry. They were also joined by officials of Microsoft, Mandiant, Visa Group of the Government of Singapore Investment Corporation, Plug and Play Ventures, Altimeter, HP, MasterCard, and Anthropic. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. vowed before foreign investors to arrest inflation and ensure to stabilize prices in the Philippines. During the Philippine economic briefing in San Francisco, California, Marcos noted a slowdown in the country's inflation rate from 6.1% in September to 4.9% in October. He said the government is committed to maintaining overall price stability through interventions in supply and demand management. He also reported improvements in labor market conditions, particularly the lowering levels of unemployment and improvement of employment and underemployment. 
Marcus said the country is ready to become the leading investment hub in Asia, backed by solid reform agenda and abating growth amid headwinds. He said the government has been generating interest in the country through briefings with investors, international economic briefings, and non-deal roadshows. A fourth batch of 13 Filipino repatriates along with their families arrive at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 3 on Wednesday afternoon via Qatar Airways. According to the Philippine Embassy in Egypt, the recent arrival adds to a total of 102 repatriated Filipinos from Gaza. Among them are Filipinos accompanied by their Palestinian husbands and kids amidst the intensifying conflict between Israel and the militant group Hamas. The Philippine Embassy in Egypt said this repatriation effort was a result of close coordination between the Philippine embassies in Jordan and Israel. The Egyptian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, meanwhile, assisted in the entry of the Filipinos into Egypt through Rafa border. In his recent trip to Egypt, DFA Undersecretary Eduardo de Vega welcomed the arrival of the group and thanked Egypt for their assistance during the evacuation of the Filipinos from Gaza and Sudan back in April. The fishing season in the Zamboanga Peninsula and the Visayan Sea has officially closed as of November 15 as confirmed by the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources or BFAR. Sardine fishing within the protected area has been put on hold for three months by BFAR via Bureau Administrative Circular No. 255. This directive applies to the Zamboanga Peninsula's vast sardine fishing areas which include Zipugay Bay, East Sulu, and the Basilan Strait. The closed fishing season aims to give the sardine population enough time to reach maturity, coinciding with a peak spawning season from October to January. It also aims to protect the marine ecology and the rich biodiversity during this crucial spawning season. As such, catching, selling, and buying of sardines, mackerel, and herring are strictly prohibited in a designated portion of the Visayan Sea. Before said, fishing will not resume in any location until February 15, 2024. And that's the latest and the biggest stories on the PNA headlines. For more news updates, please visit our website pna.gov.ph or our Facebook and X account, Philippine News Agency. The PNA headlines is also streamed via the Serbisho Facebook page. You may also watch the PNA headlines through the Philippine News Agency's YouTube account via the News and Information Bureau website, nib.gov.ph under PNA News or the Facebook page of the Presidential Communications Office or PCO. It's 39 days before Christmas. I'm Milnard Barcelona and this is the PNA Headlines bringing stories that unite the nation.